Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to our webinar about the uh, Magnolia Shop module. Uh, we're glad that you could join us today. Uh, my name is Ruben Reuser. I'm the CTO of Headwear, and I'm going to give a quick overview of what we'll be covering in this webinar together with a few housekeeping items. So right now, all attendees are on mute. However, if it doesn't mean that you can't ask questions, please feel free to submit uh, them through the webinar using your GoToWebinar control panel, and we'll do our best to answer them all during the Q&A session toward the end of this webinar. Uh, a day after this webinar, we'll also uh, be posting a video recording of the presentation on the Magnolia CMS website. Uh, as well as the presentation slides. You will receive an email with links to all the materials. Following the webinar, feel free to contact the presenter directly using the email address uh, or other contact information provided uh, by uh, Will during this webinar. Um, if you wish to tweet uh, about the webinar, please do so. Uh, it will be great so more people see what we're up to. Um, the webinar will be approximately 60 minutes, and today's presentation will be about the Magnolia Shop module. Um, will Scheidecker from Fast Forward is the initiator of the module, and he will do this presentation. And with that, uh, let me uh, pass the presentation over to Will. Thank you very much, Ruben. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Um, I'm happy to talk about the shop module a little bit for today, tell you folks uh, what it's all about. Um, I'm um, the founder and managing director of Fast Forward Web Solutions. We have been Magnolia integrators since day one of Magnolia. We actually knew the guys before they started Magnolia. And uh, since 2011, we are a Magnolia partner. We initiated the shop module um, out of personal need and are now co-developing it together with Magnolia. Magnolia did a fabulous job integrating it into the standard templating kit and now taking it to Magnolia 4.5. And um, I'm also always trying to be an active member of the community. Uh, for those who get mixed up with the names uh, on the forum, I'm uh, called Will, that is just because uh, the English-speaking people have sometimes difficulties pronouncing my first name. Uh, you see my email address here, feel free to contact me if you have any questions and I'll try to answer them as good as I can. Um, today I would like to tell you a little bit about the shop module, what it's all about, and the target groups that might find it useful, how to install, and give you a, a quick uh, feature overview. And I would like also to show you a bit how you can configure your own shop and customize and extend it to your needs. I will end the presentation by um, giving you a bit of an outlook, a roadmap, and then, of course, answer your questions that you might have. So I will start right off by um, talking about the module itself. The shop module is a, a regular Magnolia module, so it means it's a Magnolia CMS extension. It is um, based on other Magnolia modules and Magnolia standards. We're making heavy, heavy, uh, heavy use of the standard templating kit of the form module. We do use the OCM module for storing the cards. And we do use also the sample module for um, quick setup of a sample shop. So what you actually get is a collection of sample templates and of course a default card implementation. And I will show you later on um, the idea on how to extend those. So, as the target groups, I see two main use cases for the Magnolia Shop module. On one hand, 
it's for the real simple shop. If you would like to deal only with one single tool, that is Magnolia, for content management and shop, there you have it. If you only want to run one single tool and have no additional hosting setup, no additional hosting costs, Magnolia Shop module is for you. On the other hand of the spectrum, of course, if you have a real complex system, if you want your shop to be fully integrated into, in, in your website, that is not just having a shop batch on your website that links to some shop software, if you have um, very special needs, if, um, if you need to implement a custom business process, then the shop module might be for you as well because it is open source, it makes use of the Magnolia standards, and therefore it is very extendable. If you have a brick and mortar store and you would like to have a full featured shop not uh, having to deal with it at all, and you don't mind running another system, then maybe Kona card integration of uh, Ruben is the right way to go for you. So maybe, uh, Important for you to know is, um, again, it's a Magnolia-only solution. This means we're not integrating any third-party shop system. So everything's in there as open source um, extension to Magnolia. And one has to say that is not fully featured yet. For instance, we don't have a, a payment gateway out of the box coming along with the sample shop. And um, you will see that there are product options but you have no way um, to influence the price. So if you have a, a sweatshirt, for instance, and you would like to charge more for the extra large and less for the extra small, there is no way to do that now, except that um, creating several products. But again, it is open source. Um, you, you can turn it into whatever you need and extend it as you like. I don't want to lose too much time to tell you how to install it because it's quite well documented on uh, documentation.magnolia-cms.com. Just go to modules and shop and you will see something like this. It's quite a well done documentation of the shop module telling you how to install, how to set up. Just a few words maybe. Um, I started out now with uh, Magnolia 4.5.8. It doesn't matter if it's CE or EE. Just take the bundled web app or the Tomcat bundle and grab the shop module 1.1.1 bundle from Nexus. And uh, it comes with all the dependent jars. So make sure you copy them all to the Tomcat lib folder, but when you copy, just check versions of the jars because there might be a different version of that chart already in your lib folder. So make sure that you, that you don't have duplicate jars and um, take the newer version if possible. When you use the 1.1.1 version and install, you might get, you might see an error the installer complaining about a path that it could not find in the config. That is because the shop module was first taken to Magnolia 4.5 on the Enterprise Edition and therefore it has a small bug in the installer. What you can do is just create that path with empty folders in your config and you should be fine. Um, this bug is by the way fixed with the upcoming 1.1.2 version I will talk about that um, on the roadmap slide again. So let's have a quick look at it. When you're done installing, you will see two new menu items on the left, the shop management and the sample shop. In the sample shop, this is the first shop that is installed by default if you have the demo um, project installed. Here you have your 
products, and you can configure your tax currency, uh, tax categories, your currencies, your price categories, and also in the demo features website under modules, you will find the sample shop. I'm going to open that, and you will see the shop home page. Let's switch to preview mode to get all the links working. There we go. You see the product categories, they are set up as pages with a list and a detail view. You can have subcategories as well. You can actually do whatever you want with those pages structure them as you like. You can also put a product into multiple categories, of course. You have a search feature on the right. There we go. In the Dell CD, let's add it to the cart. You see the little cart on the right-hand side here. Um, let's get back to, for instance, furniture. You see a little covered here, and this is a product which has um, options, so I'm picking the birch version, adding it to the shop, and maybe, yeah, let's take the red one as well. So you see, it is the same product, but with two different option settings. So you have two items in the shopping cart for it. If I add another Birch version, of course, it's not going to add a third one, but it's just going to increase the quantity here. So um, let's check it out. Here's your shopping cart. You can still change the quantities here. Let's say I have two Birch. OK, that's a bit too many for my apartment. I only want one. Here we go. And I can continue to the checkout. The checkout is all done with uh, the form module. It's a regular multi-step form with a few custom form elements, like this one here. We don't need a billing address. So we just can hide it and continue. And now I have my order overview with, again, the items that I have in my cart and the info I provided in my address. And my order is placed. And I see I have um, the order number 101. If set up completely, I would get now a confirmation mail. And of course, the shop owner will get an order mail. At the same time, the data is stored here in a workspace of its own, shopping cart workspace. It is placed in a workspace. It's not placed in a data workspace, but in a separate workspace, because the shopping cart workspace is probably something that you want to put in a clustered workspace, in a clustered repository that can be accessed as well from the public uh, instance as well as uh, the, the author, because the data is actually created in the public instance, but you, as the shop owner, you probably want to have a look at it in the author instance. So this is a regular tree view of the data. As you can see, I have my cart. Actually, I did do order 101, I think. Yeah, this is my cart here with my three items. And here we have the wardrobe with the option that the user selected. The finish, set to birch, and to red. Uh, one more thing that I would like to show you, if I go back to sports, clothing, I have my Endura single track shorts here, but those. this is a typical item that I would like to have in different sizes. So let's do that real quick. I'm going to go to my sample shop products, and I will look for the 
product here and do our single track shorts. That's this one here. So I'm going to add a new item called size. And new, excuse me, new options. As you can see, all of this is localized. So, for instance, if you're adding shoe sizes which are different in the US than in uh, Europe, you might use the localization for that. Okay, that's going to be good enough. Of course, if you have several products with always the same option set, you can copy the whole option set and move it to a different product, so you don't have to do that all over again. Now let's go back to our shorts and reload that page. And there we have it. Our size option menu. All right. So far for the feature overview. Let's uh, show you real quick how to set up your own shop. Pick the shop management menu item on the left and you get a list of all the shops configured. As you can see right now, we only have one shop configured and we're just going to add a new one. Call it webinar shop. Here in the second tab you can have settings for your shop. Um, they will come in handy once you get into the configuration. Um, the default price category for instance, the price category manager. If you have registered users and each user has its, his own price category, you can write your own custom price category manager which will match the price category to the current user or something like that. You could also do that for regions to display different prices if the user accesses your shop from country A or country B for instance. And um, this one here might be important for you. Um, the cart variable name because if you're running several shops on one side, for instance a regular shop and a merchandising shop, you want to have different shop cart variables otherwise um, you might get a mix up in the carts if, the, if your user is shopping on both carts at the same time. And then of course the cart implementation itself. The shop comes with the default cart implementation, but this might be not good enough for you. Um, so if you need more features and you want to add them to the cart, uh, you need to provide your class name here. So let's save that configuration for now. Um, you see I have my two shops now and at the same time a new menu item was created so I can have my separate tax categories, my separate currencies, price categories and of course my separate products. You see no products here yet. And then I would go to the shop website, create my shop pages or you might as well just copy those here um, to get a quick start. And of course on the shop homepage you need to configure what shop is being used. If I can find it, there we go. Here's a list of available shops now. So I can say, okay, I want to use my webinar shop now and I will instantly lose, of course, all my products, which I'm not going to do now. None of the products are going to be displayed anymore. Good. So this is how you can configure your shop. It's again, also documented in the Magnolia documentation, but it's pretty straightforward. So let's talk about customization and how to extend the shop. There are different ways to customize the Magnolia shop. 
The easiest one, of course, is just by simply providing your own theme. As I said, the shop module is just a collection of SDK templates, so you can use them with your own SDK theme, and you get something that looks more like you pretty quickly. Let's have a quick look at a sample. Unfortunately, every, all my samples are in German, but you get the idea by just looking at the categories here. We, still, we again have the list, the detail view, we have the shopping cart, uh, add to cart button, we have the cart on the right hand side. I removed the search feature here, custom didn't want that, but as you can see, everything is pretty much the same as we uh, as you've seen it in the demo shop. Actually, there are even some icons exactly the same. It's just a different look and feel. Maybe adding your own theme is not going to be good enough for you. Maybe you have more complex requirements when it comes to the layout. So you could add your own template scripts. I can, again, give you a small example what this could look like. This is a small artist's web page. Doesn't look much like a shop, but as soon as I click on an item here, you'll see, oh, the item's got a price. I can pick a quantity. I can add it to the shopping cart. We have a description down here. So yes, it is a shop. We have price, uh, product categories over here. Product list view, product detail view, shop options. There we go. So here we added custom shop templates. All of you who have ever worked with the standard template kit know exactly how this works. You would just simply create in your module your own templates and have them extend the templates that come along with the shop module. For instance, extend the shop product detail template and provide your own template script here. Then of course you could customize the checkout process with custom fields, custom field validation. Um, you might for instance have a, a field for customer ID, so only known customers can actually process a shopping cart. cart. Um, so you'd add a custom field on one of your checkout steps and have a, uh, combine it with a custom validator which will validate the entered customer number against a database you have and will display an error message if they could not find um, the corresponding user. We're going to take another look at this shop here to show you um, a customized checkout process. Let's open the shopping cart. You can see the shopping cart here is placed in an overlay but that is still the regular form, Magnolia form module here that you're seeing. It's just presented a bit differently. So let's proceed again. Add some data here. Continue. 
so far we know everything here we've seen it before here I have my overview and here we added uh, a checkbox that requires the user to accept the terms and conditions of the shop if I try to continue without accepting it you'll see the label here is highlighted so this is a as an example of a custom form element with a validation method that you could add to your checkout process. process. Good. Uh, let's not order these uh, this T-shirt and the uh, poster right now, but get back to our presentation. So if um, customizing the look and feel with CSS in your templating script and customizing the checkout process with uh, custom fields and validations is not good enough for you if you have really uh, more requirements uh, you could add custom data to the product and of course again you would need to extend the template scripts to display that data uh, let me show you again an example here. Um, here we added a bit more data about the designer of the t-shirt or the poster and uh, additional info. Uh, notes about how to take care when washing the t-shirts. Just additional stuff that the customer required and uh, even a series of flags where he could label a product as a uh, new or special or limited um, just very easily and then this data is displayed on the website here as you see info here or um, links or if I go to the overview you see the the special flag here and here again just wait ways to extend the product data and finally you could actually extend the behavior of the shop by um, writing your own shopping cart class you might need to store additional data maybe that customer ID that I was talking about before maybe you want to store that in the cart and that field might not be available we actually have quite a few fields in that uh, default um, cart implementation uh, three full sets of addresses for shipping for ordering and for billing and so on and so on but you might have special needs there so you can extend that class or when saving the cart you might want to do additional stuff like um, update the inventory on your uh, enterprise resource planning system um, you could do that by writing a custom form processor those of you who have used the form module you know how to add a form processor this what is displayed here on the slide is the configuration of the shop form component you see the sub node form processors and you see the send contact email send confirmation email and track email processors are just the standard form module processors the shop adds a fourth one, the save and confirm order processor. This one you could extend over write or you could add your own. For instance, we did a shop uh, for one client who wanted to have a shop on his website but didn't want to deal with the logistics at all. So he had um, shop partners who were actually offering the products and, and doing the logistics, shipping and everything. So our uh, task was to write a custom form processor who would split up the order 
amongst the suppliers of the product. So each supplier would only get the order, the part of the order um, which concerns his uh, products. That's uh, a typical example of such a custom form processor. So for those familiar with Magnolia and the Magnolia modules, um, these extensions should be quite um, simple for you. For those not familiar with, the, with Magnolia yet, you really have to look at the four module um, and at the standard templating kit to, to um, get started with customizing your shop. Um, yeah, let's talk about the roadmap. Uh, maybe I should start off with key missing features. Uh, right now it's called the simple shop module. Um, this is because it, for instance, does not come with a payment gateway included yet. And some other popular shop features uh, like cross-selling and upselling, uh, those are the sh things like customers who have bought this and this also bought this product or you might be interested in the next more expensive product. And um, of course, many shops uh, require registered shop users. So you would have to add the public user registration module for that. Those features are available. You just have to set things up yourself. And uh, right now, we don't have uh, a user-friendly backend yet you saw uh, the tree, what I showed you when uh, I did the quick overview. This is the way you can look at the shop data right now. Of course, you can write your own custom uh, admin central page, uh, which would display the orders more nicely. But we decided not to invest too much time here because with the brand new upcoming Magnolia 5, we'll get a nice shiny Vardin um, back-end anyway, so it would be a bit of a waste to invest here. What's on the roadmap um, in the near future? Right now I'm working on porting the features from the shop module 1.0.9, which was from Magnolia 4.5 in the latest 1.1.2 module. Um, I'm quite advanced there, so this should be done pretty soon. Uh, this will bring shipping cost calculations to you based on the cart weight. So if you add the weight of the product in your product database um, and you can add a list of countries and shipping options and then provide for each shipping option uh, weight price table, you will get the shipping costs calculated for you automatically. And um, also, uh, we improved the checkout process a bit, so you can stop the checkout in the middle, go back to the shop, continue shopping, and come back to the checkout, and you won't be losing the data you've already entered in there. And of course there are a few bug fixes, mainly what internationalization um, concerns. Uh, not with shop 1.1.2, but pretty soon afterwards we also would like to provide a pa a PayPal as a sample e-payment gateway, so you guys can see how such a thing can be done. It will be pretty much the same problem with any other payment gateway that you will address uh, when you switch the control from your side to the payment gateway and then back. Not on the roadmap in the near future are products that, product options that have an effect on the price. Um, we don't have the need ourselves for this yet, and uh, it might be a bit complicated. And of course, other payment gateways, it won't make much sense to implement those because uh, there are plenty of gateways out there, and uh, 
we cannot implement all of them. Pretty sure we will miss the one you are using. And um, again, not on the roadmap for the near future is shipping cost calculations based on the volume of your cart. If you're selling oversized stuff, then price calculations based on the cart weight will not be sufficient for you. But again, that is pretty complex, pretty complex topic and not uh, on the requirements list of many shops. But then again, hey, um, if you have a special requirement and you need that implemented, feel free to ask us or Magnolia for a quote or feel free to uh, contribute yourself. It's open source. We would be happy to add every, any features that might be useful for uh, a number of users out there to the cart as, as long as uh, you can also maintain your contributions. Okay, so um, that's it for now and I would like to answer some questions if there are any. So hey again, this is Ruben. Um, so for right now, we haven't seen any questions yet, or I haven't. I might have missed them. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Please feel free on the side panel from the GoToMeeting to uh, put them in there, and we'll answer them. No questions? So if there are no questions, Will, I have one. Uh, okay. If you're okay with that, um, so who is actually using uh, the shopping module today? I cannot tell you exactly who's using the shopping module. As I said, it's open source; it's out there. You can download and use it without telling anyone. Doesn't really matter. Um, we did a bunch of shop integrations, and I know of a, another company that we have a contact with, another Magnolia integration integrator who did a few shops and uh, one I like a lot is the Kalanda beer shop at a, a Swiss brewery who sells merchandising and beer chaps and stuff with the Magnolia shop module. Unfortunately I didn't get no um, royalties there. That would have been nice. That's too bad. They should at least send you a cage of beer, huh? Yeah, please. and, and uh, Anyone who is actually using the shop module, you might just drop me a line. So um, yeah, I'm always interested in seeing what you guys did with the module. Okay, so there's one question that came up: is uh, what will promotion code or campaign sales uh, reductions? Is there a way to configure it? We did implement promotion codes uh, with one customer. Uh, also by extending the, the shop module. Um, it's, a, it's not a very easy um, topic. What we did for that customer is uh, he, he needed um, solid discount coupons that are one-time use. He needed coupons that could be used X times. Um, he needed uh, a solid, a fixed price reduction, so not, not a discount, but you get 10 francs off or $10 off your shopping cart. And he also needed coupons that have, uh, that are valid until a certain date. So um, yes, it is possible to do this. I, um, it's probably best if I, if I would answer that in a, uh, in a more specific post or mail, um, give you some ideas how you could do that. But again, it's not very easy to do. It needs to be saved, of course. Okay, and there's a second question from, uh, I won't say the name because my, yeah, uh, so the question really is <laughs> uh, whether the mig uh, migration to five, will that solely be a community effort or is Magnolia involved in this as, uh, as well? Actually, Magnolia does a tremendous job um, improving the shop module. They did 
all the migration from 4.4 to 4.5, except for those features that I added to the 4.4 version after they already started the migration. That I'm doing right now. That's why we don't have the 1.1.2 version out there yet. Um, so yes, expect uh, Magnolia to support that effort for the Magnolia 5 shop module. Um, then again, uh, one, I don't expect the migration to the 5 module being such a big effort as the one from 4.4 to 4.5 because we still have SDK2 in Magnolia Module 5. We still have the JCR API instead of the Magnolia API. So the main work is done. Um, the only thing that needs to be worked on is that backend, and that doesn't exist yet. So yes, um, I think it shouldn't be that big of a problem to get that shop running on, on 5. Looking forward, however, to that, especially looking forward to be able to start creating a, a backend to the shop module. It's going to be exciting with Waldin, isn't it? It is, yeah. We started out with a, with a few uh, examples improving the user management, for instance, because uh, regular users have sometimes a bit of a hard time with, uh, with the Magnolia user management. So just simplifying stuff with Vaudin, it's, it's great. Cool. Are there any other questions? I don't see any. Uh, maybe somebody else? Going once, going twice? All right. So in this case, uh, that concludes our today's webinar. Uh, thank you very much uh, to Will for doing this presentation. I think it was great. And uh, uh, to share all this information with us. Um, and thank you very much for everybody that participated. We're glad you could join us and hope uh, the session was very helpful for you. We're always happy for any feedback that we can get so we can improve ourselves as well. Um, within the next few days, I will be emailing you links to the webinars, or actually, let me only will, uh, and the slides. Uh, so you can catch up on it and read it and maybe share it with other co-workers that you have. And thank you again and enjoy the rest of your evening, morning, day, or wherever you are. Thanks you. Thank you, Ruben. Thanks, Will. Oh, wait. No, there were just thank yous that were in the, uh, in the question, so no more questions. So with Otherwise, that, if you have questions, you see the contact info on the screen right now, feel free to drop me a mail. All right, see you next time at the next webinar.